we can open to the book of Matthew chapter 5. You appreciate the prayers, but like I struggle a little longer on what the Lord would have me to teach on, but Matthew 5, I'd like to look at verses 14 through 16. Probably I've heard these before, but I don't know if I've ever heard anyone actually preach or teach them, but verse 14 of Matthew chapter 5 says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. We probably all know the song we sung in Bible school, like, This Little Light of Mine, which is Amen. based on this scripture. I guess the main thought I would want to consider is are we letting that light shine? Mm -hmm. so in verse 14 he begins with, Ye are the light of the world. What is this light he's speaking of? Obviously, we're not a physical light, but we have a spiritual light. Mm -hmm. But one thing, this light doesn't originate within us. We go over to John chapter 12, look at a few passages in John. John chapter 12, verse 46. Christ speaking here, he says, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. <clears throat> Christ is the light that comes into the world. Amen. In fact, you don't have to turn there, but you go back to chapter 1 of John. <coughs> he says that he is the light, and John came to bear witness of that light. Amen. So Christ is the light that came into the world. Mm -hmm. And without him, all men would be in darkness. But he says, whosoever believes on him should not abide in darkness. Mm -hmm. I know we don't have too much of a problem with light in the modern society. If, you, if the electricity goes out, you find a flashlight, or you, you can go on your phone nowadays. You can, right. But if you've ever been in a place where it's, there's no light at all, it's yeah. complete darkness. Mm -hmm. I remember me and Heather one time went to Ruby Falls and Chattanooga and we went down. Right. They turned out all the lights. Mm -hmm. you, know, you couldn't even see the tip of your nose. Right. It was that's the type of darkness there is without the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the darkness that men are in, spiritually speaking. But Christ says he came to be a light that who serve leaves on him should not abide in this darkness. Amen. We go back to chapter 9 of John. He again speaks of this light. John chapter 9, verse number 5. He said, that, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Amen. But we know Christ left this world and he ascended back to the Father. And now we are to be the light of the world. We are really to be. Just as the moon reflects the light of the sun, we are to reflect the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. This light is not some ember that was in us, and we had to get it going and be a light. Amen. So it's really a reflection of Christ in us. Amen. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. But if we're truly reflecting the light of Christ, it will be evident, won't it? Yeah. You're not going to be able to hide if you're really reflecting Christ. Right. There's really no such thing as secret disciples, is there? Mm -hmm. No. Just as a city that's up on a hill can't be hid, neither can you hide if you have the light of Christ shining in you and through you. I said, we live in a world that's in darkness, you can't hide a light that's shining like that. Amen. We go on to verse 15 back in our text. He says, 
Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel to put on a candlestick. And he giveth light unto all that are in the house. You don't light so you don't light a candle and hide it under a bushel or a basket or something, do you? You know, you don't take your flashlight and stick it underneath something so he can't see you. Men don't light lights and then hide them. Neither should we do the same with our light. Amen. We said the world is in darkness and we are to be the light that shines to them. And yet, I think sometimes we seem like we're afraid to shine our light. Mm-hmm. So, I know it's, all, it's often touted as a kid's song, but we should be able to sing this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Amen. The, the world needs this light, if you will. Yeah. It doesn't need us, but it needs what the light represents, which is Christ. Mm-hmm. Says they give light unto all that are in the house. <laughs> said we for me this light shine in the darkness is around us both. I know mean, well, I've said for as a congregation, but also individually we should be a light shining in the darkness. Verse 16 he goes on to say, Let your light shine, let your light so shine before men. Just as men don't light a candle and hide it. He says, so neither should we let our light be hid. We should let it so shine before others. Amen. And this is not a guarantee that they're going to like the light or that they're going to be receptive of the light. We go over John chapter 3 and Christ tells us this when he's speaking to Nicodemus. <clears throat> In John chapter 3, verses 19 through 21 he says and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil mm -hmm. when you have your light shining men aren't going to like it they want their evil deeds to be hid as it says in verse 20 for everyone that do it evil hate the light neither cometh the light lest his deeds should be reproved mm -hmm. It's not maybe not as much anymore in our society, but used to where people mostly did their bad deeds in the nighttime under the right. Right, so they could be hidden, they could be in secret. Just really just kind of like Nicodemus came in, in the nighttime to Jesus because he didn't want to be seen. That's why men love spiritual darkness, though, because it covers their deeds, at least in their eyes. You know, it's kind of like when you a little kid plays hide and seek and hide behind a chain link fence. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they they don't see it, but we can see it. You know, man thinks he has his evil deeds hidden, but they're very open to God. Yeah. But when we shine that light, it says that we have shine the light on their evil deeds, and they won't be receptive to that, will they? Right. But we do have a promise that some will. Verse number 21 says, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that he, his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. So there will be some that like the light. Those that are truly of God, they will be glad to see that light in the darkness. The natural man, he's not going to be receptive of that light. He likes the darkness. That doesn't change our responsibility to have this light shining. Just because men don't like Christ and what and his word and all that we represent in that doesn't mean that we have we can shirk our responsibilities. Mm -hmm. In fact, let's go over to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 33. I had contemplated making this my text, Ezekiel chapter 33. We'll read the first nine verses. <coughs> it says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, 
Speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, that the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for their watchman. If when he seeth the sword cometh upon the land, he bloweth the trumpet, and warn the people. And whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and take if not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not the warning, his blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh the warning shall deliver his soul. But the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned that the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Right. We begins this passage with the analogy of a watchman, and that's what we are in the New Testament age. Is Amen. To, to warn people of the wrath that is to come, the, of the, really the damnation that they're already abiding in, that death is coming, that judgment is following. But if we don't warn them, he said we are, really will be guilty of their blood. We have a responsibility to tell them whether they're, and if they don't receive it, that'll be on them. Right. It would be kind of like Adam sitting back there, he's got the security monitors. If he saw someone with a threat coming in the door, he just sat there because, well, I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> so that's really the same thing, though, isn't it? That's right. We don't tell others about Christ and the gospel. We would say that first, we would say, in the situation of that, we would say he's not a very good watchman, wouldn't we? Right. But yet, we are watchmen, spiritually speaking. He goes on here in Ezekiel 33, verse number 7. He says, So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman in the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. Mm-hmm. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his own way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Mm-hmm. That will be humbly worse Amen. for the servant of God. That we are to warn the people. No, uh, there's wars and rumors of wars always going to be. That's not what he's speaking about. But no, there is a spiritual warfare about us for sure. Mm-hmm. We said death is coming and judgment will follow. Hell is a reality and a lake of fire. Yet so shall be the end of all those that don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And what have we done if we haven't at least told them about Christ and the gospel? We haven't warned them of sin, and the only one that can save them from sin, then we have failed as our duties of a watchman. We really failed to let our light be shining, as our text says in Matthew. Mm-hmm. But he says, he will require their blood in our hand if we don't warn them. That's really something to think about, isn't it? That yes. We will be held responsible to at least some degree if we don't tell others about Christ. Mm-hmm. We don't tell them what the Word of God says. But oftentimes we use the excuses that they won't like it or they won't receive it or they'll be offended or they won't like me anymore along those lines. We ought to be worried more about pleasing God and bringing Amen. glory to Him. That is what our text says. We'll go back. Verse 16 of Matthew 5 it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. First off, they can't see our good works if we don't have any. That should be evident. But, but we must display good works. That is always the command throughout the scriptures. That would, as the children of God, we would have good works. In fact, we love it. At least I like to quote Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not yourselves is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10 goes on to say, For we are his workmanship, 
In Christ Jesus, ordained unto good works. Amen. He says that he has before ordained that we should walk in them. We were really saved for the purpose of serving him, weren't we? To Amen. bring forth good works to him. In fact, Titus tells us that he redeemed us that we might be a Peculiar people zealous of good works. Mm -hmm. Why well, that? Really, question when people say they're saved and seem to have no desire to serve God. Right. Something for sure is not right. Yeah. We can't profess to be a follower of Christ but not desire to serve Him. No, let, let your light so shine before men that we see your good works and then. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. We should never be seeking our own glory. It should always be that people would glorify God. We should not be looking at me and look at what I have done. We should be looking at Christ and what he has done for me. Look at what God can do for you. Mm -hmm. you know, man, especially in the flesh, likes to receive praise and honor, doesn't he? But that was never our calling as the people of God to receive glory and honor. Right. Back to Revelation 4 and 11 tells us, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor. Pray for, we say, for thy pleasure, all for. Okay, that was reading out from the turn over there. Revelation 4 and 11. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For us. Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. Really, all things were created to bring glory to God, but we, especially in the, have been made a new creature that we might bring glory to Him. Mm -hmm. In fact, 1 Corinthians 10 31 tells us, Whether you eat or whether you drink, whatsoever you do, do it to the glory of God. Do all things to the glory of God and tell the Lord that mm -hmm. it doesn't leave out anything. Everything we do in this life should be with the intent of bring glory to God. A man, so we like to look and say, well, look at what they're doing and look at what, or look what they're not doing. But I said it should never be our attitude that men would look at us and praise us. Right. It should be that they would glorify our Father, which is in heaven. I said it should not. Be, they must be doing something right over there. At best, they should say, "God really blessed them." So, if whether there's one soul saved or a hundred souls saved, we should just not be looking at what we're doing. It should be looking at what God is doing. Amen. But, you know, even the lost, will, God will get the glory out of them, just like he was Pharaoh. If nothing else, when he has judgment upon sin and they're cast in the lake of fire, he will get the glory out of that. Mm -hmm. That's not a, a side that God will, people like to think about, but he will get the glory out of judgment upon sin. Amen. For he is also a God of justice and righteousness. And certainly he gets the glory when we serve him, when we obey his word, when we do what he says. And then obviously when we sing praises to him and he backed up his name. But he will get glory at the last judgment as well. Amen. How are we bringing glory to him? Or are we seeking to bring glory to him? Or do we seek to bring glory to self? To me. Professing Christians seek to bring glory to themselves. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look very far at false teachers who are doing exactly that. You know, everything we do ought to reflect Christ. And so, when we do, if we do receive any type of glory, we ought to reflect that back to Him as well. Mm -hmm. so that light that's in, that we are shining is not. 
any of wrongdoing with us, the light of Christ himself. Or do we have our light shining <clears throat> shine before men that others may see, or, mm -hmm. or are we hiding it under a bushel? Right. The whole world is in darkness. Are we trying to shine our light to them, or are we enjoying the darkness with them? Mm. So this this flesh would enjoy darkness. So the natural man it would rather be in darkness so that deeds may be hidden. But yep. We are shining the light in this world now, and one day we'll all be brought to light with judgment. Amen. There won't be a single deed hidden, no, not ours, not the unsaved. So that we would shine our light and bring glory to God now as the people of God. Let's go ahead and close with that thought. Amen. Amen.